And then right here is going to be a, uh, a piling and some decking right here, like a pier. All right, here we have this cool little piece that was coming up, so I left that in there. So what I like about that is compositionally it, it breaks, you know, it breaks through both of these, the stairs plus the, the dock thing. The dock starts over here, goes behind this thing and continues on right here. And then this will be undercut up to about right in here. This will all be carved out as stone, rocks, same thing up in here, rocks. And uh, so that's what I'm going to start working on next. Uh, so how am I going to do that? I'm going to just start take this scoop here. I'm going to keep scooping around, scooping around until I get to the boat. I'm going to scoop above the boat right in here and that's going to leave this wood exposed and then I can get in there and start detailing the inside of the rowboat and then make the uh, curved outside part and it'll start being defined. All right, if you're wondering if I had this all planned out beforehand, the answer is no. I'm just making this up as I go along. I'm looking at the wood and I think I'm just getting creative. What, what kind of creative imagery can I put in here uh, that has to do with the ocean, you know? So here's what I got going on. I got this stairs coming, stopping here. Then this water runs in. And the way I'm trying to make it look like water is by waving it up and down and then here I have a crested wave here it's, it curves this comes down hits the back of my rowboat which is just here's the flat part and then it curves around here and curves around here to a point and then I got the sides tucked in at an angle and then I'm going to I'm gonna take my pencil and just draw a little seat here uh, and then just draw the outer lines here just to help guide me then I'll take my dime tip and just come in here and remove some of this negative space and define the inside of the rowboat a little bit more. And then we got uh, the first piling popping out and then uh, I'm gonna come in here with the uh, decking. I'm just gonna shove it way back in there, tuck it way back in and hopefully I can get some planking going on in there. It's gonna be tight. I'm not sure if that's gonna work or not but we'll give it a shot. All right, if you're wondering how I'm gonna carve out this negative space inside the boat, this is how I'm doing it. I'm taking a series of cuts like that, and then I'm gonna turn my bar this way, perpendicular, and just take that nose tip and just go zip, 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 back and forth like I did right here. You can see I went back and forth, up, 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 making sure that the center is the deepest because you want it to be rounded like a boat. All right, so here's the uh, boat, the negative space taken out, and then the water comes around and hits the first pillar there. And then I cut some negative space in here just to give the illusion of water, and then a dock above, and then there's just a series of pillars there. And maybe I'll do one more on the end there. And I'm going to attempt to take my dime tip bar, and I'm going to take the lines that are already here in the wood, and I'm just going to add a few more accent lines on the planking, just to help uh, clarify what that is. And then I'm going to take my dime tip carving bar and just cut out uh, organic looking rock shapes into these areas. I changed my mind with this thing. It was confusing. And so uh, anytime you have confusion, it's time to get it out of the design. So I, I just cut that out and just left a kind of a round bottom uh, to help with the rock, rocky look of it. All right, so here I put some steps in. Going all the way up to the top. And I put some just texture lines into the planking here just to define that a little bit and I uh, started making some stone some rocky forms coming out right that so uh, 
that's going to basically go around all the way around in here. This will all be rocky stuff. And then down in the water here, I'm going to take the tip of the bar and just make kind of wavy, uh, curvy, organic shapes in the water. And uh, I'm done for today. We'll continue tomorrow. All right, so I just finished uh, texturing the rocks. Going around. And now I just have to take the uh, sander. I'll take a 60 grit uh, flap sander. And I'll show you that in a second. But first, I gotta fix this mistake. Look at this. See how the angle? Let me go right here. Here's a good. Look at how this is messed up right here. Right here, the angle goes up and it doesn't keep doing that angle, it flips over. So I gotta carve this part in a little bit more. That means I gotta adjust the roof and probably a little bit of this. And then that'll look nice and consistent there. And then it's ready for some wood preservative. All right, see how there's all that little wispy, hairy wood fiber sticking out? Well, I'm gonna fix that by uh, taking a hand torch to it. And uh, I'll just take one of these hand torches right here and uh, lightly go around everything. I don't want it to look charred. So it's kind of a tricky balance. So here's one I've already done, right? It's gonna ha have a little bit of darkness on some of the edges, but when I come through and hit it with my sander, which this is what I was talking about, Okay. I'm just gonna just real quickly just come in here and take off these colored pieces here. I want that white wood to show through. Uh, it should look quite nice. So. All right, this part, the steps, was looking kind of boring. So I took my die grinder here, which by the way, what is this? This is a uh, Makita variable speed. I've tried different die grinders in the past as cheapies that you can't control the speed and they feel so out of control uh, that the, and they usually broke but this guy's been a workhorse and uh, he's proven me that uh, brand makes a difference Makita's die grinder variable speed highly recommended so I use this cuts all bit and then this bit to get these small and big divots into this part here. I also use the die grinder, I'm sorry, the uh, dime tip blade to uh, cut these little windows. And uh, same thing in the door, just made a little outline of a door and then uh, cut a little window in there. All right, on the top part here, the little railing system, I took my uh, Arbor Tech and just did little slots uh, all the way around just to give it a little texture all right we're gonna stain the bottom first and we're gonna use TWP total wood preservative so the cedar tone and I like wood preservatives because they soak into the wood fibers instead of being a plastic film that eventually cracks and flakes uh, wood preservatives soak in and become part of the wood fiber and uh, sun, water, mildew protectants works great. By the way, I made a Lazy Susan here. It works great when you're finishing carvings. You just spin it around nice and easy. Good thing to have. All right, here's what the finished lighthouse looks like with the wood preservative on it. 